Grease is a unique material that requires special tools to handle and dispense. In today's video, we are going to demonstrate the proper setup and priming procedure of one of those tools, a grease pump. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. We are mounting one of our Series 20 grease pump kits to a 120 pound refinery drum. Roller on kits like this 917 kit will include a drum cover, follower assembly, assorted fittings and hardware, high pressure supply hose, control handle, and of course, the pump unit itself. Quick note, grease applications typically call out the container by weight rather than volume. We are working with a 120 pound drum, which also is known as a 16 gallon drum in other applications such as oil dispensing. The other two common containers are a 400 pound drum and a 35 pound bucket. Grease pumps and their available kits are set up based on these container sizes. To start, the drum cover is bolted to the pump tube. This is four bolts that come up from underneath the cover into the pump body mounting flange, securing them together. Next, the follower plate is assembled. The 35 pound and 120 pound kits include a three piece rubber follower, which consists of the rubber adapter insert, metal retaining sleeve, and the follower plate. Four screws thread through the adapter into the follower plate itself, holding everything together securely. The main elements of the kit are assembled. Let's install the pump onto the drum. Remove the top and open the inner liner as much as possible. Examine for any surface debris and remove any if found. If bits of dirt or plastic are sucked into the pump tube, they may cause a blockage and pump failure. Insert the follower as shown, massaging it into place until the air is pushed out from underneath. Stop when the lubricant begins pushing into the follower center port. Next, take the pump and cover assembly and slide the tube assembly through the follower center hole. Press down, allowing the drum cover to rest on the drum lip. Thread in the drum cover locking screws to secure the cover to the drum. Finish by attaching the lubricant supply hose, swivels, and control valve. This is a basic roll around unit. For pumps installed in a stationary system, you may want to leave unit disconnected from the main assembly for now. A couple items we suggest to pick up along with your pump are a shutoff valve and at a minimum, a filter regulator combo unit. These do not come in the kits, but are recommended for proper operation. These also assist in the priming process to regulate the air pressure so the pump cycles slowly and later to regulate dispense volume and pressure the pump can generate. Check the manual for proper size suggestions for your pump assembly and whether or not the lubricator is recommended. This pump assembly has a quarter inch inlet port, so the minimum recommendation is a quarter inch filter regulator assembly. Let's prime the pump. Begin with the ball valve closed and set the air regulator to around 30 PSI. Open the grease control handle, or for pumps that are part of a stationary system, open-ended hose is okay, but be sure to point the open end away from yourself and others in the area and into a collection container. For our more industrial units piped into a system already, there is usually a bleed screw located on the outlet body to open for this process. Slowly open the air side ball valve. Pump should begin to slowly cycle. If it does not, increase the air pressure in small increments until the unit starts operating. Allow the pump to cycle slowly until lubricant begins to dispense out the coupler without any air pockets. This should take a minute or two depending on the environment or the type of grease itself. Once grease is full and consistently, shut off the control valve and close the air side ball valve. Increase the air regulator setting to desired air pressure. Recommendation is anywhere between 80 to 120 PSI. However, your application will dictate the necessary pressure needed so that damage does not occur. Remember that increasing the air pressure will increase the dispense volume as well as the dispensing pressure. This covers the basics for setup and priming a grease pump. Setup and their system complexity vary from application to application. If you are experiencing issues with priming your grease pump, here are a couple items to consider. 
Let's start off by stating contamination is the single most common cause for pump failure. Grease sticks to almost any surface by nature, which means it also loves to accumulate dirt and debris if left open to the elements. This is especially true if swapping between grease barrels and the pump tube is set on a dirty surface. The grease will capture any loose material it touches, so best practice is to keep the pump tube off any surface that may allow grease to pick up material, which could end up in the tube itself and cause a malfunction. We must stress the need to be proactive in keeping the pump and lubricant free of debris and contamination. Using a damaged lubricant container like the drum we received for use in this demonstration should be monitored. The follower is an important component helping to keep the unit primed, but if a significant dent in the container stops the movement or allows an air gap to form at the wiper edge, pump may draw down an air channel and lose prime. The lubricant itself is another component to consider as a possible issue. Our pumps can handle lubricants up to an NLGI number no. 2 rating, however if the lubricant you are choosing to use is particularly tacky or thick, or the environment is particularly cold, the lubricant itself may require more time to flow and dispense. We may at times recommend pre-packing the tube inlet with lubricant to help jumpstart the prime, and installing additional weight to the follower to assist in forcing the lubricant into the pump tube. However, in certain cases, additional specialized equipment may be required. Another option, if the application allows, would be to switch to a similar but lighter viscosity lubricant in order to effectively dispense and lubricate the equipment properly. Check with your equipment manufacturer or lubricant supplier for acceptable alternatives. Thanks for watching. If you require any additional assistance, please contact one of our local area representatives or our technical support team. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.